All right, in this video, I'd like to talk about the CSS class selector. In the last video, we talked about the CSS element selector. With the element selector, we select uh, HTML elements that we want to affect or style by using uh, their, their element name directly. So for instance, if we want to change the style of the default style of a paragraph element, we would just use the P uh, in the CSS rule, uh, specifying that all paragraphs should look like whatever we specify, right? Whatever property value pairs we put in that, that rule set. Um, it can be that we don't want all paragraphs styled in the same way. Maybe we have uh, a sidebar or we have an inset on the side of our page that we want to we want to create and that that inset or a sidebar has uh, contained in it some paragraphs and we want those paragraphs styled in a different way. So we no law we need some way to be able to target uh, paragraphs differently, right and say, oh these paragraphs are different than these paragraphs. And we can't do that with the element selector. It selects, the element selector selects all paragraphs, regardless of where they are on the page. So we want a, a little bit finer grained um, control selection ability. And the class selector will give us the ability to do that, not only between individual elements, but across elements. We can style, uh, maybe in those sidebars, we have paragraphs, tables, who knows what, any elements. And we so we want to be able to put all of those elements in a particular class and say any any element that's in this particular class that we'll name, a named class, should look like this, <laughs> our rules. Uh, if it's not in a class, then we would go back to our default uh, selection structures, uh, element selection. All right, so that's what we're going to take a peek at. How do we create this class that we can uh, assign m elements to uh, this class? So let's jump over to Putty here and see if we can take a peek at this. So I've created a file already, of course, as I've been doing recently. Um, and I want to point out again, as I have been doing, that it's... It, the structure of this document is important to humans, right? It makes it much easier for us to read. So I started with the, with the HTML, right? And its end is down at the bottom of the page, which we'll go down to. There's the end of my HTML. Then I indent it. I know I need the HTML is the, like the grand, great grandfather element in here, right? It's the, it's the absolute root of, of the whole document, the whole HTML document. So it contains a head, open, close, and a body, open, close. Those are each indented a bit. Now, how much they're indented, that's up to you. But they should be indented so that it's clear that there is a body and that there is a head. And so I want to, again, mention that uh, the head is the area within the HTML document, right? This document, HTML document. The head is the area where we, as the programmer, the developer, the creator of this document, want to say something to the, we want to say something to the browser. Uh, we're trying to tell the browser something. So in this case, I have an element uh, in the head called the title. So I'm trying to tell the browser what the title is, right? I'm not talking to uh, a human that's reading this page here. I'm talking to the browser. So the browser is going to take this title and we know what it's going to do with it. It's going to put it in uh, the, what's going on outside of my house? <laughs> it's going to put it in the, uh, in the title of the tab. I'm going to pause this for a moment until this goes away. Okay, that's over. Uh, so where were we? 
the title. We're, we're speaking directly to the browser with the title. The browser will take the title and place it in uh, as the title to the tab. So some with some browsers, you may mouse over the tab and it will show you the title. You can see the title when you look at the tab on your browser, right? And so here, we're, remember we're in the head here. So we're using this style element to speak to the browser, right? And we, the style HTML element. So we're talking to the browser here because we're in the head. So we're gonna tell the browser how to style things. Now we're doing this right in the head it is possible to create the styles in a separate file and pull the file in. Kind of the same way we, we work with images, right? The image is in a separate file, we pull it into this document. Um, so that's, a, that's another way to do it. And as the styles get more and more complex and longer and longer, it's desirable to put them in a separate file because it just really gets unwieldy, right? This could be a couple pages long, this, these styles that we have. All right, so that's enough on that. And this this is uh, this particular style that I have here. The rule is for a paragraph element, and it's an element selector level, right? We're going to try. Oh, there it is, right here. So I just use the name of the element. In this case, it's a paragraph element, so its name is P. It's, it's a P element. I know in the HTML it uses angle brackets around it, but that's because we're we're in the HTML. We're we're we have to explain where the element begins and where it ends. So we need an opening tag and a closing tag, right? Here we're just saying any P's that you come across should be styled like this. Any paragraphs that you come across should be styled like this. Remember, it starts with a, the rule set, starts with an opening curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket. So that, and it contains the rules inside, right? property and value separated by a semicolon, I mean a colon, and ends with a semicolon, a particular rule. So this is one rule for the paragraph elements that should be applied to all paragraph elements in the document when using this particular method, which is element level, right? We're going to now, we're going to, in this video, we're going to see how to separate these paragraphs <laughs> and make some of them styled in one way and some of them styled in another. All right. So then here's the end of my head, All right? So now I'm finished talking with the browser directly. And now I'm saying to the browser, this is the stuff, everything from inside of the body is stuff that people that are visiting the web page or viewing the web page should be able to see. All right. Now, at the same time that I say that, I've, I've created a comment here to describe what I'm building with this code. And because I'm using a comment, the browser will ignore this. So now I'm, I'm talking to uh, a human. I'm talking to a human here, but a special human, a human that's looking at the code, not a human that's trying to visit the website, right? Header one, my first element in this document, and I have two paragraphs here that paragraph and this paragraph. And then I have finally another element here. I used a BR in front of it because I want a line break. I wanted a space in there, right? In the, in the, file, the visible file. And then it's an anchor element, right? So it's a link back to the Sys 101 image uh, index. So I, you know, it's doing that because I've created a new file for this, right? And, and this is something, this is the nature of websites. There was a, when, when, how many websites do you visit where it's just one page? It's the nature of websites to have clickable links that go to different pages and then they all need a way back to from where you from where you are to where you, from where you came. All right? So that's my link back to the Sys101 index. That's the end of the body. So now I'm finished speaking with the Website viewer, we'll call them. This is a regular user who's just receiving the web page. This was to a web, a special website viewer, <laughs> one who's looking at the code, which is not normally what we do. When we go to Amazon.com, we don't look at the code. We look at what's rendered. And so these HTML elements 
H1 and P are rendered by the uh, the browser. So we don't, when we're visiting a website, we don't ever see this opening tag, right? Or the closing tag, we don't see that. It's rendered. What we see is only the things that are contained in the content of the, of the element, of the HTML element, right? And so if we go back up here, what we're attempting to do with the CSS, I'm kind of reviewing here, is we're trying to say, now there's a paragraph element we're saying to the browser if you come whenever you come across a paragraph element you should make it look like this you should do these things to its style or, or affect it in in these ways and we can have as many of these rules as we want in here right one after the other and they always follow property colon value semicolon then we do enter property colon value semicolon and the browser knows that we're finished with our rules for the paragraph when it comes across the closing curly bracket, which corresponds with that open curly bracket. All right, so that's the general idea of CSS rules altogether. And that's a summary, a brief summary or, or review of what the element level is. Now we wanna move this into something that gives us a little bit more flexibility. This is fine if, in fact, we do want all paragraphs to look the same. But if there is some reason why we want particular paragraphs to look different, my, my opening example was maybe we have a, a sidebar or maybe an inset that we're going to create on this page. Yeah, or an HTML page here. Then we may want the paragraphs contained in the sidebar to look different than the paragraphs at large on the document, right? So we want we need a way to be able to distinguish uh, what kind of paragraphs we're looking at. All right, so let's see how we're going to do that. Well, let's look at this HTML again real quick before we go too far, too too far. So in this HTML down in the body, I have two paragraphs, right? There's one two paragraph elements, HTML elements, and there's one there. So using the element level selector, P, I would expect both of those elements to take on these characteristics, these two right here. All right, so let's uh, jump over to the browser and take a look at that. All right, let me get the browser here open for you. All right, there's my homepage, right, that I've created in this class. <laughs> um, there's my link to Sys101, which is the, the directory I'm working out of for these videos. All right, now I've put a couple of links on there, and obviously I should have had some breaks, right, because of these links, there's three of them here, one, two, three, and they're all jammed together on the same line. If I had done a BR at the end of this or the beginning of this one, then it would have moved to the next line. I should have had a BR between each one of these, a BR element, a break, a line break, or even maybe you call it a carriage return if you want. Then I then these would be in a row, right? And on a column, they would be on top of one another. I could have also done it by using an unordered list, which would have been an even nicer way to do it. Maybe I'll correct that for future videos. Um, and then I finally, my last link gets me back to my homepage, right? So you see how this is forming up here um, and becoming kind of website-like, right? Very simple, very rudimentary, but nonetheless, it's starting to appear to be like a website. So there's our class selector example that we're working on right now. It currently is using in its CSS an element level selector and we know that's the p selector right so all paragraphs i had two paragraphs in this document so both paragraphs look the same paragraph one and paragraph two because i have no way to distinguish between them at this moment in time so let's jump on back to our putty and see if we can make some changes here all right so a class rule or element selector, which is what we really call this, should look something like this. It looks basically the same. 
But instead of using the element name here, we're, we're going to use, let's just do um, as a first example, dot inset. Right, and then I do the same thing, open close, and you know that's how I typically do it. I do the open and close of everything first so that I don't forget. Because if that closing curly bracket is missing or has or disappears, uh, you know that's going to be nothing but trouble, right? So what I want to do, we'll learn a little Pico here. I'm going to do control K, which cuts. Right, so then it's gone from there, but I don't want it to be gone from there, but it is on my clipboard now, right? So what I'll just do is uncut it. Control U, so it goes back in there, but now it's still on my clipboard. So I'm gonna come down to the line where I want that pasted and uncut again. Okay, so we learned a little bit of, a little bit of Pico. Cut that, uncut it, and I'll come down here and do a uh, uncut on that. All right, so one thing I would like is to get rid of this blank space in there, so I just backspace. All right, so now I have a new rule. The rule, rule is virtually the same, right? The only thing that's different is I'm naming this rule uh, with something other than the P. I've decided that, well, it, the whole reason why I want to use the class here is because I might have an inset. And we know what that is from a textbook, right? It's something off on the side and it usually looks different. A lot of times it's some sort of a yellow background on things, blah, blah, blah. It's slightly, it's, it's separated from the rest of the text, the rest of the paragraphs. So I'm just going to call it an inset, right? I made that name up. You could call it anything you want. You could have dot sidebar or dot Johnny Fresh, anything you want, uh, right? So, but once I name it, then that's the name I'm gonna use, okay? So for my inset stuff, let's, let's change this color to yellow, yellow. So it's got a yellow background. This is not gonna look so good, right? With white, probably gonna have a hard time seeing white text with a yellow background. So let's just make it um, color, uh, I, too far there. Um, let's make it uh, blue. I know that's ugly too, but it doesn't really matter, right? So there we've got that. Now, we have a special rule here that's, that has a special name. We just have to give the browser an indication of when it should apply those rules, right? Currently, with this method, it knows every, the browser knows, every time it comes across a P element, these rules should be applied. Every time it comes across, and what we're saying with this one is, every time you come across a class, an element, who's in a member of the class called inset, it should, these should be applied, these rules, right? So um, we've need, we need to put some member in that class. So we'll come down to our paragraph here, this one, and enter right here. And we're gonna add an attribute to this. All right, and this attribute is going to be class equals okay. so attributes always look like this they always take on this kind of an appearance here uh, where the, the the attribute that we've worked with we've, we've used two attributes in different um, other different elements we've used an attribute called href and it, so it was href equals and in quotes the value and we've used src source equals and in quotes the value here we're going to do the same thing. Class equals inset. Okay, so there's my paragraph with the attribute inset. So now I've named, I've, I've, I've made it such that 
this particular paragraph is a member of the class inset or the class named inset. So now there's a way to match this element, the CSS rule that I created right here. Uh, I just specify a dot here because I, if I didn't, the browser would, this is just a, a technique that's, that, that we use to use, um, uh, that's employed in order to use a class um, selector. But it, it has to be, because if we had it this way, we would be implying that there is an element called insert or inset, right? Just like we're implying here that there's an element called P, paragraph, and there is. Here, there's got to be some way for us to say, well, this is, I'm not trying to talk about uh, uh, an element name here. It's something special. And so I'm saying it's a class name. So multiple elements can be of this class. I can assign multiple elements to this class named insert. So if you come up, I'm telling, talk to the browser. Remember, this is in the head. So I'm, I'm telling the browser, if you come across an element that belongs to the member, uh, to the class inset, then do this to it, right? So come on down here. Um, and so I have assigned this paragraph to the class inset. So now the browser is going to say, ah, I found an element. It doesn't even care if it's a paragraph or a bold or any other element. It just knows that it, the browser just sees that uh, there is an element in existence in this document that belongs to the member inset. Right? It doesn't really care that it's a in the way that I have it written right now. It doesn't really care that it's a, a paragraph at all. It only cares that it's a member of the class. Okay, so let me write this out. And let us see what, all right, and I'll take it back over to the browser. There we go, and then let's uh, do a refresh and see what we've got. Yep, there we go. So I'll refresh it again. Back to Sys 101. I'm going to my example page, and we see paragraph two, which we know from the HTML code is a member of the inset class now is is being styled differently than the other paragraph right? so one thing to keep in mind here though i mean this can that's the simplest possible way to, to work with this let's get back to putty again the way i have this written oh i'm back <laughs> Back to Putty. Hi. The way I have this written, I'm not distinguishing between any HTML elements whatsoever. I'm saying any element, by just writing a class like this, any element that is a member of the the inset class should look like this. If I want to sp specify particular elements that could be long, so I want to be a little bit more detailed, I could do this. P. So now I'm saying paragraphs that are of the inset class should be styled like this. Like this. All right, so it's a little bit more detail. So what I'm doing throughout all of this explanation is I'm just, this is the most general possible way, right? But every single paragraph will be styled the same. If I use just a class name, I can style every single element that's a part of that class in this manner, right? So we could, have, in effect, create another element here. I'll just do something else here with it that's not a paragraph. So in order to illustrate this, I'll make a bold. Oh, it's a B, right? B, 
this is bold. Uh, you know what I want to do though is put it in that class. Class equals inset. I didn't forget anything. I got the eagle. I got the quote. Close quote. Open it. This is bold. And then I'll close this. Okay. So now because this bold is a member of that class, it's going to get treated the same. Control. It's going to get treated as a, it's going to get, it's going to be styled the same way that um, paragraph two, this one, was styled a moment ago. So we're going to jump on the, I just wrote it out, yeah. So we'll jump back to the browser and I'll do a refresh. You've got the browser, I've got the browser. Let's do a refresh. See? Now, all right. So we see there's a bit of an issue here. Um, I may want to have a little more flexibility with this. So I could say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that got a little bit messed up. There are some things that we want maybe different between the two. It's just more, more options, more flexibility. Um, I can be more specific about, let me come up here, about this particular rule. And I can say, no, 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 not all elements of this class, but paragraphs that are elements of this class in set. Control O, enter, back to browser. Um, oh my gosh. I guess I never went to putty. Let me show you quick what I just did. All I just did right there was added a P in front of this. That's all I did, I put a P there. So I'm saying paragraphs that are members of this class inset should be styled this way. But I have not at this point said bold Bs that are members of this class should be styled in any way at all. So now I expect that the bold that we just saw a moment ago that was styled the same way um, as the paragraph is now not going to be styled because it's not a, the bold element is not a paragraph element of that class, but rather a bold element of that class. So then I would, I would want to create another rule so I could be very specific. So now let's go back to the browser and refresh that. There's yours. Um, I think I did. If, if this doesn't work, then it's because I didn't save it. But I, I think I did. Right. There we go. So now the bold is not styled at all, right? Because I don't have a rule matching it. <coughs> I had mentioned this bold, I mean, this uh, break, <coughs> line break a moment ago. I think I could use one in this code and so I'll just show you again I think I've showed it to you before but I'll show it again I, I really think there should be another break here right so that there's more space let me just show you what's coming across my mind there do you see how this is bold and then there's I've got the sys 101 back to the sys 101 um, anchor under there clickable link um, I really like another space between those. All right, they seem jammed together to me. So I'm, let me let me just put another break in there, right? That's what we want, another line break. So I've got one right there already. That's what gave it a new line, right? The problem that I have with that previous uh, document that we were looking at is that I don't have a break at all in there. So they're all running on the same line. So let's just add another one here. All right, so now I have two breaks. So we're going to have... This bold is going to show up, and then there's going to be break, break, carriage return, carriage return, and then this link will show. Okay, control O, enter, back to the browser. Uh, we'll put up the browser here, refresh, see. That's what I need to do to correct what's going on here, right? 
I need a page source. Are you looking at this? Let me make sure. Yeah. If you page source. See, I need to, I don't have any breaks anywhere in these, right? If we look, there's no breaks at the end of any of these on either side, anywhere. Um, <laughs> there's one here, which is why we have one link showing properly by itself. And then these next three that I just created for the CSS stuff, I didn't, I failed to put breaks after any of those one, two, three. And this one probably from what we were just looking at, this one does have a break before it. But the problem I just noticed a moment ago was that maybe it should have two. So that it's, it's separated a little bit more from all of these other ones. Another way to handle this the whole thing in this code would be if I, if I used an unordered list here. Right? And that would give me um, spaces, blanks between. It would handle the BRs. Maybe I'll do that and show you show you in another video uh, that I did it and how it works out. But for right now, let's just um, wrap this video up. I think we're at the end of it. Go we'll back to Putty for a moment and just kind of review what we did here. So we created two separate elements. I had two paragraphs first off, and I showed that at the beginning of this video, using the element selector, that's just the P, I was unable to do something different between these two these two paragraphs, right? Because the element selector selects all elements of a particular name, so all paragraphs. By using the changing to a class or having a class element or class selector available for the browser, then I could assign any particular uh, element to that class and then it will see with this example it was a bold that's been there's a bold that's been um, assigned that I assigned to the, the insert class and a paragraph that I assigned to the insert class right so then using just the dot insert this is when we had just dot insert here any wait I got rid of the dot too. Dot insert, I need that. Otherwise, it's not going to understand that it's a class. It's a new class, right? This doesn't exist in HTML. I made it up. It's a new rule I made up. <coughs> so we know to look for members. Any elements, HTML elements that are members of this class should be styled this way. And what's important here is the word any. Any and all members. So any member that has the attribute class equals and in quotes insert this name, it's going to take on this styling. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a P or a B or, or anything, an A, anything. They're all going to they're all going to get this style, all classes. So I'm not contained to a particular class anymore. I'm not uh, constrained to a particular class. I mean, sorry, a particular element, a P element. So if I want that, that's very broad, right? That means I could I could change everything. If I made body, if I came in here, oh, there it was, it just went by. If I made body a member of the class um, inset, then that would mean everything in the body would all take on that appearance. Right, so I can go extremely broad using a class. And I can go extremely constrained by saying now only paragraphs that are of the class insert should be taking these characteristics. So this whole notion of whether we're using element level selector or class level in select selector, which is this, if I want to be very pure about it, that's class right there, right? I named a class. So the difference between these is the level of granularity of selecting which HTML elements in this document I want to um, affect with these rules. 
All right? And so this one, well, they both have their own characteristics, right? You use them in different ways. Uh, you, you would come up with these as you're building things. There's no specific um, instance where I would say, in all cases, this is when you would use this. It's, it's, it's a creative thing. You use it when, when, you're, when it's necessary. But that's how it's, that's how it's used. You just create a class name um, and, and then give it some rules, and then you can assign any element you want to that class, right? Just by using the attribute. Uh, in the same way we used href and src. Uh, in this case, it's class equals. Right? And at that moment, when the browser sees the word class there, it, 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 if it were a human, it would be saying, ah, so here's an element of that class that was defined up above. I should style that specially in a special way. All right, so hopefully uh, there had a bit of a review in there, so this video got long. I'm trying, I'm trying to compare and contrast between uh, element level and class level selectors. So that we've got one more um, ID level. I'm not. I, I'll attempt to not go through the whole <laughs> spiel again and stick to just the uh, how to operate with the and why how to op how and why to operate with the ID level. Um, selector. So that's it for this one. See you in the next video.